Hey folks, Sefka here looking through the initial druid information for Shadowlands. I'm going to be looking at the general druid changes, the specific restoration ones, and then we're going to look at the uh, covenant abilities towards the end. So this is all quite an initial look, so none of this has been on uh, alpha or beta yet. It's all just a first impressions. So as somebody that does like to make good use of the druid's uh, versatility and hybridness. I think this overall looks pretty good. Uh, all druids will now be able to use Ferocious Bite, Barched In, Cyclone, Stampeding Raw and Iron Fur. I think the Ferocious Bite makes perfect sense to be honest. Without Feral Affinity there is no combo point really for using, for being in cat form. So that's a good sign. Uh, Cyclone is uh, pretty good, just a short little term CC that uh, the Druid, you can turn your healer into a bit more of a maybe a caster CC. It really depends on your on your matchup. It's probably not going to be the best and most useful in the world. Uh, I'm not quite sure how immunities tend to interact with bolstering. That'll be quite interesting. Standard peeping raw for every Druid. That is very good in my opinion. It's a great utility that's not really that well seen. Um, it was one of the only reasons to be a feral or guardian, so I suppose that sucks for them, but for everyone else I think it's great. Uh, in addition we have Heart of the Wild, which uh, if I recall was increase of raw stats, particularly when you're in a different form. So for someone who wants to use their offer all abilities, like oh I don't know, a uh, cat weaver for example, that uh, that seems to go too. They've really, I was worried they might move away from, uh, from a healer's being able to deal as much damage but in fact for a druid at least it looks like they're going full hog into that uh, so the affinity talents associated with each specialization that's balance guardian feral resto also gain an additional utility balance receives typhoon which to me implies that typhoon is being removed as a talent uh, which means that whether we're going to get a cc row still uh, remains to be seen um, the row right now with the stun and uh, mass entanglements with Typhoon. Uh, Feral gets Maim. It's, I suppose it's just as, you know, Maim is your equivalent of uh, like Kidney Shot ish. So it's a bit of a stun as a finisher. Uh, Guardian gets Incapacitated Roll, not bad. And obviously Restoration already gets a uh, sort of Vortex. So. Uh, so for the Restoration specifically, uh, Swift Mend is back to consuming a heal every time on the target but it's going to have reduced cooldown and cost. So it's going to be much more, I assume, like a way of burst burst healing, which is one of our weaknesses, I feel like, as a, as a Resto Druid. Uh, it does mean that uh, you'll have to spend a bit more time casting, probably, rather than just use Swift Mending and forget about it. Uh, Nature's Swiftness being back, uh, just allowing instant cast uh, abilities. It doesn't seem, uh, doesn't seem too bad, to be honest. Whether it's uh, going to be a talent or not, they haven't said. Uh, we've also got Nourish, which is a talent, uh, which is going to heal an ally for a significant amount. Uh, Nourish before, I believe Nourish might run out, might run out be a uh, PvP talent. Um, but that's another option that we've got as a healing. Until, they, until we know which talent row it's on, it's going to be hard to say how it lines up. So that's a very quick look at the druid changes. So next we'll be looking at the covenant ability. Each of these provides one bonus for everyone and one bonus for your specific spec. Uh, these bonuses for everyone I believe might be just limited to the world but I'm not entirely sure about that. So I do think that these first abilities are probably not the main reason why you would pick to go they're more like a little bonus that you have for picking i think the combat based abilities that are spec specific are what you'll go for more but for uh kyrian we have summon steward which will uh, give you a vial which will remove all curses diseases poisons bleeds and some health probably not really the best thing in the world for druids we can already remove two of those and granted there are some pretty nasty bleeds and diseases in 8.3 but I'm not too not too sure about this one. Your steward offers additional selection of useful lemnities. We've seen sort of like these one-off things before and they've been there so-so. Venthyr, -so. Uh, we have Door of Shadows. Wend through the shadows appearing at the targeted location. So it's a bit like a sort of targeted leap 
blink, sorry. Uh, feral, displace a beast, sorry. Maybe that will be back. Uh, that one's not too bad. The uh, Necrolord one, form a shield of flesh and bone that prevents damage equal to a portion of your maximum health, standing near the corpse of a defeated energy, uh, enemy. When the ability is cast, will create a larger shield. Doesn't really seem the best. I mean, druids are pretty good on the mobile front, so maybe you don't feel the need to go mobility-wise, but as I said, all of these are a bit bonuses. Uh, Night Fae, which is quintessentially probably the druid uh, faction at least. Uh, turn into a Volpine, increase in movement speed. You may reactivate uh, Soul Shape to teleport a short distance forward. Displace the Beast may be actually back. Uh, and uh, lots more cosmetic stuff uh, that you can uh, acquire for this. As I say, they're all relatively... Uh, they've all got their niches. And that's going to follow through with the theme of the class abilities. As all of these, I think, have their place. I have my questions on each of them that I really want to look into more detail. So I think all of them have got a place where they're going to be useful. So which one you pick... I think largely it should be cosmetic. Uh, hopefully they're going to be relatively well balanced. So for the Kyrian, uh, form a bond with an ally on cooldown. You may empower the bond for a short period of time, granting you an effect based on your partner's role. This is very similar to Symbiosis by the sound of it uh, from Mr. Pandaria. I'm not entirely sure whether it's going to be quite as Symbiosis as Symbiosis was. That was very much... Uh, you got abilities based on the like specs that the person you were linked with and your spec. I wonder whether it's going to be more the limit of sort of choices, options you have from them. Maybe might be a bit more limited as it was pretty tough for them last time. But I know already know somebody who's pretty excited about this, and I think I think it's got some uh, good potential. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what's uh, on there. A uh, ravenous frenzy from uh, Venthyr. So every time you, uh, well, Druid spells increase your damage, healing, and haste by a percentage, stacking. But if you spend time idle, uh, you'll lose health and then get stunned. This one I'm a bit wary on. I mean, not many of these have got negative drawbacks. So I assume this one is going to be pretty powerful. If you spend a period of time idle, is that movement-wise? Is that just not casting? If you're out of combat, do you lose health and stun is that what it means it means idle you're not in combat there's not really gone into much detail here so this one could be really powerful or it could be obnoxiously annoying like if in mythic plus you're constantly getting stunned moving to the next target adaptive swarm is a necrolord one uh, command a swarm that heals or deals damage to a target and increases the effectiveness of your periodic effects on them it just jumps between friend and foe much like the priest uh, cascade i think it is this one reminds me a bit of the Lady Waitress music box in that it will sort of deal damage or heal and can sort of work in both ways. I think this one overall doesn't look too bad for cat weaving. I mean, we already have four dots as a cat. Um, and then the only downside and then healing, uh, you know, obviously we've got a fair number of dots as well. Hots, sorry, as well. The my real concern is how the sort of jump happens. Does it smart jump? Will it locate who's got the most hots on them and jump to them, or whoever's got the most dots on them, or will it be a case of here's your pack of like five enemies you're fighting, you put it immediately on you know the focus target, and then it jumps to a random party member, and if it's not the tank, then that person maybe doesn't need healing, and then it's just sort of doing nothing until it jumps back to a random enemy. Or does it spot, right, your tank is the person who has the most hot, so I'm going to jump to your tank. And then it'll be like, right, this enemy that you were attacking before, who's still got all your four dots on, this is the one you want to kill, so it'll jump to that. If it does that, that'll be really powerful. But otherwise, I think it's got good gameplay value. Uh, Convoke the Spirits is the Night Fae one. Probably the most generic, but I don't. I think it's still got some good potential. As you um, flurry... Uh, channel out 16 druid spells over four seconds um it says moonfire wrath regrowth rejuvenation thrash rate shred and iron verb on appropriate nearby targets favoring your current specialization if this only does healing spells for resto then it's not going to be the best i mean they might be quite quite smart but i can also see a world where you do sort of treat this as a if you can use this while you're in cat form while you're dealing damage you can be like right my party needs a bit of a heal but i don't want to leave cat form to do so 
you know, with the global cooldown that I can just pop this and it will just provide some good healing. We don't know the cooldown of it, so maybe you can do this on a regular basis and spend less time out of cat form. So overall, I think for most content, unless you're like a high-end Mythic Plus or Mythic Raider, you can probably just pick whichever one takes your fancy the most, to be honest. But uh, all four of those, I think, have got really good potential and probably all of them are going to have strength in different circumstances. So I really look forward to playing around with them. And overall, from the people I've spoken to, both druids and not, everyone's really looking forward to this. So thank you guys for listening. This was pretty unscripted, uh, hence why there's probably a large amount of ums. But uh, every time there's new druid information, I'll be putting out one of these videos. And once I'm in the beta, I intend to do a lot more. So thank you very much for watching. And if you want to see more or hear more, then just uh, click the subscribe. And I'll see you again next time.